Here we are with Juan Carlos Fresnadillo, the director, and did you write The Intruders as well? You know, it, it was funny because I, finally I decided not to write um, in the screenplay, but I was, I was involved in the whole process. From the very beginning, when, when we discussed about to make a movie, uh, you know, uh, focused on, on the family environment and, and how fear becomes a legacy and how you pass on the next generation to your kids, you pass you know, your own fears. And, and I was working from that seat, you know, in the beginning until the very end, you know. And, 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 but I decided not to write, not to execute, because, you know, something, when you are writing, at least for me, you're falling in love with everything, you know, and you're completely attached to the material. And then when you have to go to the next step, which is, you know, sharing that with the, with the crew, and especially with the actors, you have some kind of resistance to change anything, you know, and you're fighting for not to change, which I think is not good. You know? It's more precious to you if you yeah. write it yourself rather than to say it's better for the movie if we just skip this part or cut Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And then in this movie, I, did, I, I, I found it that the best, the most important part in this one was, was the, the, the casting, you know, and, and I wanted to have the freedom to change everything if it's if it's somebody was demanding that, including myself, in order to be more human, more open to the process of, of humanize a supernatural idea like this one, you know. But otherwise, you know, I think I thought, you know, we were in a very supernatural stuff and then the movie I think it looked it looked like a like a block thing. And I think having in mind that the movie at the end has some kind of human resolution, I think we, we have to work in a human way, which is, you know, be open to anything, and then figure it out, you know, the, the, the solutions. You know. uh, Juan Carlos, as someone who has a reputation and a, sort of a fan base for horror uh, movies with 28 Weeks Later, which is considered a great sequel, which is so unusual for that to ever happen, but um, I guess I wonder when I look at this with a filmmaker who has this kind of reputation, do you actually believe that there is an evil presence in the world, that it can manifest itself as something that sits in somebody's closet and come out and uh, scare them to death? I really believe that we create every single manifestation in terms of supernatural. I mean, I, I think the supernatural or, the, or these kind of things happen when when human people are creating that. I mean, I really believe in the power of our, of our mind and our brain to create fantasies and, and as, as, as a real thing, you know. And that's one of the, the concepts, I mean, one of the visual concepts in this story, you know. The, the, everything that what, what, what is happening in the movie is in the minds of the characters, but at the same time it's real because they are seeing that, you know. So, I really believe in that. I, I wouldn't say that I believe in, in in, in a supernatural level, which is not connecting with the human side. You know? You're Spanish originally? Yeah. You were born and raised in Spain? In Canary Islands, which is Spain, but it's a very special part of Spain. Because I think... It was Canary Catholicism part yeah. of your childhood, yeah. which has a very big distinction about man being uh, cursed with original sin when he is born yeah. and the need for salvation and the fact that the devil is, as we've seen in the Exorcist movies, a real thing. Yeah. So was that something as a child that you knew instinctively you were interested in? I'm so interested in, in, in that because I was affected by that, <laughs> by that uh, uh, education, you know, and that religion, you know. That's why when I was growing up I, I was fighting myself because there is a part of me which is believing in I mean there is a very innocent part of myself which is completely a believer of that but as, a, as an adult person I'm trying to destroy that and and, and see the world as it is not as a as, rational person exactly so no, no, I'm trying to see the world as it is and not as they as they told me you know and but it's a very huge fight and and I think and I think you can notice that in the movie as well because you know in intruders there is a moment that the religion enters in the, in the, in the, in the story and they are trying to help the, the, the family in order to overcome the problem, but then it becomes worse. Because I, I really believe in that. You know, sometimes if you try to solve a problem from a very um, uh, locked uh, belief, beliefs, then maybe you're creating another problem, you know? So, yeah, definitely, you know, the, 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 my, 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 I was raised in that environment, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to overcome 
the, 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 the danger of believing too much in things that I think are not true. Scary movies are meant to scare an audience. We've heard about, you know, years ago they might have advertised a movie saying we will insure you against if you have a heart attack in our film because you are frightened to death we will take care of you or whatever. Do you worry though that there are impressionable kids maybe that might see your movie and take it the wrong way? I mean take it too seriously, end up on some ledge someplace thinking that they're fighting the devil or something? You, you know Having in mind the, the final conclusion of the movie, which is a very human resolution, and it's, and it's a resolution which is not attached to any crazy idea or any supernatural idea, I, I find that solution a very healthy thing, you know, so I, I don't have any, any problem about people, I mean about kids watching my movie, despite the fact that the movie is an R rated in the United States, I'm sure that if a kid watched my movie, I think he's not going to have nightmares or he's not going to suffer because the movie is, in a way, it's proposing you a way to overcome fears and, 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 and a way to, I, I think it's telling you tools and devices to, 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 to fight and to, to defeat your monsters, you know, and that's something very, very healthy, you know, in terms of, you know, that kind of things. When the movie begins, we are in Spain with a little boy and his mother and the sort of like the boogeyman outdoors in the rain that's going to come in through the window. Yeah. And I'm, I must say, I sat there thinking, what movie am I in? Are, is this a subtitled movie? Are we seeing a Spanish language film? Is Clive Owen going to be dubbed? And then you flip it to another time and we see Clive Owen on a construction site way up in the sky, don't we? And he's speaking English. So there's a back and forth between these two settings. Was that always something that you were planning to do? Did you ever conceive of it as, let's put it all in English, and then let's do a whole Spanish version and not have subtitles for either version? You know something? I, know I, I knew from the beginning when, when we were developing this idea about two languages that it was, we were dealing with some kind of tricky thing, for, especially for the Anglo-Saxon Anglo uh, audience, you know. But, you know, I thought that, you know, we, we had to be so close to the idea of something that, that, I, that I needed to express in this movie, which is no matter how far you're uh, getting away from your origins, no matter how much you change or you change your language, always your, your nightmares and, and your ghosts and your monsters are traveling with you. And that's part of the story. And, 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 I, and I felt that if I, if, I, if I didn't do that, I was betraying the, 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 the primal concept of the, of the movie. So that's why we ended up to doing in this kind of multicultural and, 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 um, and splitted you know, uh, structure. Because I found it, that was the only way to tell that story. And, to, to explain that that you you, you can't run away from, from who you are and when I say this you can't run away from your dark places you have to to deal with that and you have to face that dark things in your life in order to overcome it so you have a little boy and you have a little girl in this movie how is it working with these actors so young who are basically being scared to death yeah. constantly <laughs> through the film <laughs> With the, with, the, with the girl, it, it wasn't a problem because, you know, she's almost 13 years old and she deals very well with that without any problem because, you know, she, she has the, the tools for, for dealing with that kind of scary things. But with the boy, it was more tricky because, you know, he's eight years old. And I was concerned about some sequences in the movie because, obviously, you know, you have to push him to, 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 to extract from him that kind of emotions, which is a, which is a very difficult thing. But finally, we ended up in to, to, to establish some kind of game, and and in order to, to be so scared and then going away immediately from that, and I think it worked because he I think he didn't suffer too much, and on the other hand, you know, kids had ha, has that kind of ability of go of, I mean of forgetting everything what they are going through, you know, and, and in one second he was scared to death, and in one second and the next one he was completely, uh, you know, happy and. So when you say a game, do you say, like, we're going to play a game now, we're going to say to you, we're going to kill your dog if you don't look scared in this scene? And <laughs> Not as cruel as that, as that game, 